Hey, I had technical difficulties, so I thought I started again. All of a sudden, everything started beeping. I think I stepped on some of that critical technology that I was talking about a second ago. Um, anyway, I'm here in Austin, Texas, getting ready to speak for the National Association of Broadcasters. It's a huge conference. It's for their small market television audience which is funny because small market television is their biggest market. <laughs> so anyway, um, so I'm here. There's going to be a few thousand people in the room tomorrow morning. I'm going to take you guys behind the scenes as much as possible. So you might even see a few extra live streams from me um, uh, for the, over the next couple of days as, you know, tonight I'm going to go down for the mic check and just kind of take you through some of the things that happen behind the scenes in a speaker. And obviously the first behind the scene thing is not only getting here, and there is a trick in regards to getting to your conference and making sure that you never miss one, not only getting here, but getting checked in. So I'm all checked in. I got my clothes laid out that I'm going to be wearing this evening to the networking dinner. Um, so that's, that's ready to go. I have my slides and everything ready to go. So it's all these little things that you have to do that you want to make sure that you're doing to get ready to go for your conference, right? And so one of my habits is I always leave out first flight day before my conference. I'm always on that plane heading out um, because if anything happens, I need to be able to have a, a drop dead time, which is what I call it. So if there's something going on and I'm in South Florida and I need to get into a conference, but for whatever reason, a hurricane came, whatever, and they shut down the airports, I need to be able to make a game time decision to get in my car and drive to the next viable airport. Sometimes that airport could be, you know, several hours away. And so, so if something happens, I need to be able to make a game time decision and move airports, get on another plane and make it happen. So if I make sure that I plan to be at my conference a full day, and I literally mean a full day before I plan to speak, then the chances of me making it there are pretty damn good. Like the roads would literally have to be completely shut down in Florida for me not to be able to get out. And a lot of times if I see weather coming in or I see something coming in, I'm making those moves ahead of time. Um, but that is not the rookie mistake. That's just a little behind the scenes. I'm gonna be sharing with you guys as we go along. Um, here is, uh, and if you looked at it in my post, if you looked at any of my posts, I was super hyped this morning. The guy next to me was wondering what was happening because I have my headset in. I'm blasting music. I'm singing. I'm chair dancing. I am like first class chair dancing. Like it is cool. I'm like grabbing his hand. Like, come on, we can do this. Like, like he was, he finally said, whatever she has in her coffee, I'm just going to have that. Like whatever she has. I was in a great mood this morning. I will do that same exact routine tomorrow morning. I get myself extra hype before I go on stage. I bring all that energy up before I go on stage. And I usually do this 24 hours ahead of time, again, because my goal is to make sure that I'm delivering, you know, more than what they expected, more than what they paid for. I really want to bring it. And, um, and so I do that for all my conferences, whether there's, you know, five people or 500 or 5,000 or 15,000, it does not matter. I am going to make sure that I bring the hype every time. All right. So beyond that, um, I will also be drinking a significant amount of water because I need to make sure that my vocal cords are um, basically moisturized. You know, I don't want them to get all dry because then they won't work as well. Um, I have to be prepared just in case anything happens. All right, so that's your behind the scenes stuff that, I, that I'm telling you about. What is this, this mistake, this huge, huge, huge mistake that people make all the time when they have these deal closing conversations? And I gotta tell you, I have coached sales teams, like record-breaking sales teams. I have coached um, people just getting into sales. I've coached professionals that, that do sales all the time. And I got to tell you, they historically make some of the same exact mistakes. But this one mistake I'm going to share with you is something that we see experts, rookies alike make all the time. It does impact your ability to close the deal when you make this mistake. So I'm going to share with you what this mistake is and exactly how to get past it so that you don't do it. And also, the, what I'm going to share with you will also make sales, if you don't like sales, if you don't like to sell, not feel so salesy. That's the one thing that I hear from a lot of people that I speak to. They're like, sales just feels so icky to me. I'm going to show you a little bit on how not to do that. All right, so let's get started. First of all, 
who in the hell is this chick? Well, my name is Donna St. Louis. What's up? Oh, I'm sorry. Let me get my shout outs to my fam. I saw some people come on, but here's the deal. Let me get them. I didn't have my glasses on, which if I don't have my glasses on, you know what that means? I can't, I can't see. So I did see that I saw a family come on. Hey, Carol, what's up fam? How are you doing? Um, you hate sales, Holly? I got you. Let me tell you, there are three questions. Well, there are six total, but there are three questions. If you ask these questions, it will really help you. And quite honestly, if you come to, or anybody who's watching this, I am having a sales boot camp for people who don't know how to sell. Um, that's not what this is about, but since you, since you said you don't like to sell, I'm having a sales boot camp for people who don't know how to sell, who people who are like me, like you're not a professional salesperson, but a significant amount of your business relies on sales and you don't like that icky feeling of selling, like you don't like that, um, then check out uh, High Profit Sales. There's a boot camp in Orlando that's coming up and it's, it's total game changing for people who don't like to sell. And it's something that I teach to professionals but to novices alike who don't like to sell. And it is a deal closer, it is a game changer. So what's up to my hashtag HPZ fam? These are people who went through the mastery program and quite honestly, they're kicking ass and, and that's why they keep showing up. All right, so let's do this. Let's talk about the mistake that professionals make and rookies make, what's up Mary, in regards to um, um, deal closing conversations. And it is a super, ridiculously common mistake and the challenge is, is I don't think people necessarily know how to get past this mistake and so we're going to talk about how to get past it so if someone hits you up and they say hey I'd love for you to come and do some consulting or I'd love for you to come do some coaching or I'd love for you to come hey what's up chef Tia she is our celebrity chef that uh, does all of our retreats um, if you guys want an amazing chef, Tia is the bomb. Um, but anyway, you talk to someone on the phone, right? So you finally got a prospect on the phone and holy shit, that took forever, right? Like you're like, I have made 850 million calls. I have sent out 10 million emails. Um, and I finally, finally got someone who has made the decision, the smartest decision in the world to talk to me. Oh Jesus, let me not mess this up because that's what goes through our heads, right? Holy crap. I do not want to screw this up. And so the what's going through your head while you're talking on the phone with them a lot of times is your solution. You're sitting there thinking of what you're going to solve. So if you're a speaker, you're thinking of this is the speech. They are calling me for the speech. If you are a consultant, you're thinking this is the solution. They're calling me for this solution. Um, if you are a coach, you're they're call you, you know because they want to get in your program. You're you're hyping up your program. That's what's in the back of your head. You're thinking of it the entire time that they're on the phone, and you're probably going, well, yeah, no shit, Donna. Of course. I'm thinking of the solution that I'm going to provide for them. I mean, what should I be thinking about? Like, you know, puppies and like babies and like anal leakage. Like, what am I supposed to be thinking about? Seriously, I should be thinking about that, right? Wrong. Actually, <laughs> what you're doing is you're really listening only to respond to what you want to sell them. And so what happens is, if let's say, for example, you have this keynote, this killer kick-ass keynote speech, right? And you're like, I, oh my God, they want an opening keynote speaker. That's what they want. I have this speech that is perfect. And in your mind, all you're thinking about is when you get your chance to speak so that you can verbally vomit on them about the awesomeness of this speech and how everyone who's ever heard it literally thinks that you're a god or a goddess and that you like walk on water and that you can make magic happen, right? You are just listening to them in order for you to sell. That's what you're doing. And by the way, that's what makes sales feel icky. That's why people hate sales because you they know that you are only listening to pimp your product. That's all you're doing. And it is a huge mistake. Let me tell you what you really should be asking them. The first question that you should be asking them is this. Hey, I'm so glad we're on the phone. What's going on in your world that made you want to have a call with me? Because I'm, I know the crazy happened in my world. I'm not really sure why you're getting on the phone with me. 
You need to know what's happening with them that makes them want to call you in the first place. You can make this huge, ginormous, ridiculous assumption that they want you. <laughs> right? And you are so clear. Oh my God, you're calling because they want my services. No, you don't know shit. <laughs> you don't know anything. You have no idea why they're calling you. You might think you do, but you really don't. So stop making assumptions. What is going on in their world that made them pick up the phone and call you? Right? They might say, you know what? Oh my God, I saw you speak and you were so good. And one of the things that you mentioned in your speech was about this book. Can you give me the title? <laughs> right? like, they're calling for a title and you're trying to pump your shit on them. They just want a title of a book. Right? But we get so excited that someone's on the phone that we just start ramming our stuff at them. No, stop. First question, what's going on in your world that made you call me? Now, let's say, hey, they do want your services. They're like, no, I need your coaching or your consulting or your speaking. Are you freaking kidding me? That's why I'm calling you. And so ask them, what's going on? When I got, so National Association of Broadcasters, when they call me, they're like, you know, the reason that we called you was because you were referred. Oh, okay. So you didn't just you didn't just go to YouTube and like love all my videos? What the hell? Right? You didn't watch me on Facebook Live and go, obviously goddess, she needs to be here. Nope, that didn't happen. I was referred. Okay, great, referral, whatever. Okay, so right. And so so I'm sitting there going, so clearly you don't know my awesomeness, and that's fine. Right? That <laughs> you just got random passerby said hi or Donna, and you're like, yeah, I give her a call. Great. Now I know how, okay, gr so who, who's a referral? Who's a person? Oh, okay, I'm gonna ask follow-up questions. I'm gonna ask at least three follow-up questions. Thanks, for, who referred me? How do you guys know each other? Have they referred anyone to you before that you absolutely loved or hated? Cause what if this person always gives out shit referrals? What if they're like the worst referrer ever? <laughs> and you're like, they always awesome people and they're like nope the last three people we hated but we thought we'd give you a shot you want to ask these follow-up questions now you don't want to go beyond three because then you're going to sound like you are literally just um they're in an inquisition and it's going to hate they're going to hate you they're going to hate you but you do want to ask the questions great okay so tell me about your conference is what people normally think say right that's normally what's going on at your conference i don't say ask them what's wrong with your conference exactly you want to have open you want to have open-ended questions thank you michael that was great right what did they say about me why did they refer you know you want to really understand so what you know i had um a good friend of mine kevin and andrew who referred me for this conference and i said oh god what did they say about me and are you sure you want that on your stage right like i make a total joke about it i never assume that people said nice things about me that's number one but I have these open-ended questions, right? And when they tell me, well, what they said, and I'm like, okay, so what is it about that that you think you need that on the stage? So they're like, oh, they told me that you were like totally hype, like a little unmedicated, but you need to be, um, and that you know you have this really cool story. Oh, okay, well, tell me what is it about that that you think you need for your conference? Why, why is that important for your conference? The reason I'm asking this question is because I need to know what they're really looking for. Because listen, they might say, well, they said you're really smart and we want to know more about the triggers and we want to know how to use that because we recognize that sales is so important, blah, blah. Oh, okay. So you want an opening keynote, which is a general session keynote, but you're not really looking for a motivational keynote. You're looking for an educational keynote. Gotcha. Right? Or they might say, oh my God, this is what they actually said to me. They're like, Donna. We've hired keynote speakers in the past and every single solitary time, we end up getting people who are experts in our field and all they do is get on stage and they take their training session and they basically put it on a bigger stage. So we don't get a motivational keynote, we get a breakout session on stage. Ooh, good to know. Why is this good to know? Because now all of a sudden I know that what they don't want is seven triggers to yes. That's not what they're looking for. They're looking for like great to epic, right? I know this now. I'm not pimping what I think they want. I have to listen to what they're telling me they want. And I'm like, whoa, that must be really frustrating. So I've identified their frustration. So the first thing, what's going on in your world that gets us on the phone? Number two, 
what's frustrating you what's gone on and 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 why does that frustrate you and what's happened and oh my god and how did that make you feel like i'm going all the way in for this woman it was like a huge like she was just like yeah it's annoying i really want hype and i'm like so why does why do you feel like your people need hype before this conference and she goes and she told me exactly why she gave me a whole bunch of information and i was like oh i'm gonna write something new they're not even getting the stuff i got they're gonna get some new stuff based on what she said for me this suddenly became this amazing opportunity to share something that i've been wanting to share for a long time why because i listened and i didn't listen with the idea that i even had the solution or the answer in fact my assumption was that i did not see if you go into the conversation with the assumption that you don't have the answer you will not spend your entire time trying to push your answer on them professionals and rookies both do this they get on the phone and they start solutioning before they even understand why this person thinks that you are the right person. It's not time to solution yet. You are not there. You've only asked two questions. You're still not ready. And I'm like, dude, so you had somebody get on stage. Were they referred? And she was like, yes, they were a referral. I'm like, did it, did it come from Kevin or Andrew? <laughs> And she was like, no. She said, but they did tell me that they drove all the way to Chicago to see you when you were there. And they said you did an educational session that was amazing and hype. So I can just imagine when you're not even doing an educational session. I'm like, yep, your people won't learn a damn thing when I'm on stage, right? Like I'm joking with her, but I'm like, I recognize that's not what she wants. So now I'm going to my third question. How did your audience, how did your attendees feel when they got this educational thing on the stage when you really wanted them to get something hype. And she said, tired. She goes, they felt tired. They felt like they were just inundated with education the whole time when what we really wanted was somebody who was just like, like you. And I'm like, cool, right? Now I have enough information to know what that means, right? She's already told me it made me look bad, like, I, you know, and I and what she learned from it, I let too many other people take over in conversations and telling the speaker what they what I wanted instead of just being clear myself. So she gave me all this other information and she let me know, we're gonna be connected at the hip. I'm gonna talk to you, I'm gonna tell you everything. I'm gonna let other people say stuff, but at the end of the day, always validate it back with me because I know what I'm looking for for this conference because this is my responsibility. I, if I would have started, just FYI, if I would have started with my solution, I would have said, oh, sales, you guys have a lot of sales people there, you want seven triggers to yes. Would have straight up, that's clearly what you want. And I would have been wrong. And I would have given her the thing that she got so many years that she did not want again this year. When I talk to her and she says, no, I want great to epic, I want you 2.0, I want unadulterated, unapologetic, bold, I want audacious Donna on the stage doing what you do as free as you do it just let it fly and I'm like well let let's discuss letting it fly because you don't you don't know me well enough yet right but still we were able to have a conversation I was able to listen to her and until you ask those three questions which what is going on in your world why is that frustrating you or what are your frustrations what have you tried before that didn't work and what is the fallout from those things that didn't work and how did that make you feel? Then I could go, so what, the personal win that you're looking for is this, right? Validate that I understand what her personal win is. Now that I have all of these things together, I can go into my mental bank and I can go, no, 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 this is what she's looking for. I can't do that if when they get on the phone, I am hell bent on shoving my freaking solution down their throat. It just doesn't work. This is something that every person that I've ever spoken to in sales has done or does. Stop. If you are so desperate for the sale, I get it because you get on the phone and you're like, I gotta sell this, I gotta sell this, I got him on the phone, I gotta get it to him. But if you just back up a little bit, just a little bit, and not sound so desperate and not be so desperate in that moment, then you will be able to hear what your client really wants 
And then you'll be able to determine whether you actually really do have the solution. Because if you really don't have the solution and you go up there and you get on that stage, you think it's going to be bad because she's mad? She's going to tell everybody how crappy you were because guess what? People will talk about how crappy you were 10 times more than they will talk about how great you were, right? And so that's what you don't want to happen. You really want to create this, this scenario where everyone is going to win. And here's the thing. I would prefer, and I do quite often, have a 60 to 90 minute conversation regularly when people call me for sales. I take the time, I spend the time, and I'm not kidding you, I have probably one of the highest one call close rates than a lot of people. If they get on the phone with me, I'm closing them 70 to 80% of the time because I'm so clear. And if I'm not closing them, then guess what? I know and they know that I'm not the right solution for this time. And there have been times, by the way, where I have not been the right solution. Like I'm so clear I'm not the right solution. They're clear I'm not the right solution. We ain't even gonna pretend that I'm not right, the right solution because I'm not gonna read your script. I'm not gonna play by your rules. So I'm not the right solution. I'm not gonna be unsuccessful on your platform. And they can move on. And that's okay. That's really okay. And what do I mean by that? I had someone recently who said, listen, we need to make sure that, um, you know, we need to make sure that we bless your attire, um, even your shoes. And I'm like, you're gonna bless, like you're gonna bless my shoes. You're gonna make sure, you be check, you gonna check out what shoes I'm wearing before I get on stage? Like, what? Right, and I'm like, that's not my brand. That's not who I am. So, 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 if you need that level of control, then you have a lack of trust. And if you don't trust me on stage with a microphone, I'm not your speaker. That's it. You you probably should look for somebody else who has like puppet strings. But that's an honest answer, right? That is an honest answer because I'm going to be go on stage and I'm going to fail. I don't think I'm going to fail. I know in that situation I would fail. And so you have to know who you are. But more importantly, you have to get to this number one thing: your customers. Why? Why do they? Why are they looking for someone like you? And why are you the perfect solution? And what in your bag of tricks is the perfect solution? That's what you gotta get to. If you're not there, they're not your client, don't screw them over. In fact, if you wanna do them a great favor, have people that you can refer business to all the time, all the time. And again, people just, they're not comfortable with the sales conversation. These four questions are game changers. It takes it from being salesy into being a conversation. By the way, one of the tricks to know if you're doing this right is if you are speaking more than they are, you're doing it wrong. If they're speaking more than you are and they're laughing and there's a conversation happening and it's like you guys are sitting over coffee at Starbucks, then, that, then that's when you know you're doing it right. Anyway, my name is Donna St. Louis. I'm gonna be showing you guys some backstage stuff here. I have a couple of slides I need to clean up because there are a couple of misspelled words. So I'm gonna go do that. If you're interested in coming to the boot camp, go to High Profit Sales. And if you're interested in coming to the one for speakers, it's there one day after each other. There's High Profit Sales and there's the High Profit Boot Camp, which is just for speakers if you, or people who wanna be speakers. And you're like, I need to know the ins and outs and secrets of the speaking business, go to High Profit Boot Camp. So you got High Profit Sales, High Profit Boot Camp. And if you wanna talk to me, just make sure that you give me a call. You can go to my direct message and, and DM me. You can go to um, meetwithdonna.com and you can just get on my calendar. Anyway, that's all I got for you and I will be taking you guys behind the scenes. I have a mic check today here. It's five central, so I have a mic check today here. I'll take you down for mic check. And again, I'll give you as much of the back of the room tour as I possibly can. I'll talk to you guys later. Have fun.